stand now. Daunting home records used to be the, the domain of the likes of Liverpool and Manchester United. How do you explain yours? 28 games unbeaten in the league. Um, I'm not quite sure, really. I don't know how we explain it. We, we've, uh, we're fairly well organised and we've had a few breaks here and there. I suppose that's it. I never really thought about it that much, to be fair. Now, two promotions on the run. Do you feel, though, you've had enough credit for your achievements? Um, yeah, we've, you know, I mean, we're a small club, so... Um, but the, the, tonight, we're getting a little bit of credit, but I think they're coming to see the King Clancy's and the Man City's, but they'll see some of our players, and they're pretty good players. Because I was thinking, last season, despite winning the championship, none of your players in the Division Two select, and you were overlooked for Manager of the Year? Well... Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? <laughs> so, the, yeah, so this is the biggest league game for years here. Are you looking forward to it? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, it should be a smashing night, a full house. Great for the fans. Good for our players to test themselves against a the side that, uh, in all probability, will be there at the end of the season. So we're looking forward to it, yeah. And a good derby clash and the rain coming down, just That's spice it. the pitch That's up a bit. It. Lovely. Lights on, all the rest of it. You get great atmosphere. And just when, before we finish, I believe you've got a message for your son, Stan. Oh, yeah, Daniel, ring your mum. He's gone to Spain on holiday and he hasn't rung her. She's gone mad. Get your mum rung, please, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. OK. Well, it's a big crowd here, a sellout crowd, and they've had to pack the Manchester City fans into either end. So, in both halves of this game, the visiting team will be attacking towards their own supporters. I must admit, Rob, I've got a little feeling for City tonight. And will bury with a tremendous record. Home record, defensive, superb. I just feel if Kinkladze weaves his magic, City can continue the run. And tonight's match referee is the Preston-based official, Phil Richards, who's got a busy weekend ahead. He's running in the Great North Run on Sunday. He's been sponsored for a cancer charity after the loss of his wife, Helen, to the disease. Well, this proud, unbeaten home run that very are protecting faces a stern test tonight. In 28 league games, they're unbeaten here at Gig Lane. But Manchester City, by virtue of that victory at the early pace setters, Nottingham Forest are hungry for another victory and get the game underway. And here's the man who could do a lot of damage to Berry tonight, King Cladsey, if he is at all on his game. And he's seen plenty of the ball early on, getting and going with Somerby, but that's overhit for Nicky Somerby, who's already facing some early jostling with Andy Gray. Yeah, no doubt about that. There's a few elbows flying about there. The ref just gone over having a little word. And that was unnecessary. Andy Gray was very angry. And there was definitely, well, there's a bit of contact there. Let's hope that's not what we're going to see a lot of tonight. Johnson trying to get into the game and let Kit Simons know he's there. This is Nicky Dortz. Losing out to his opposite number four, Jared Vikins. And pressure here already for Morley, and he did well to retrieve that. Battersby was looking. There's no doubt about it. Then they're going to get out of City, aren't they? They're going to pressure, close them down, hunt and pack. And when they get a chance, they'll whip it in that box. Again, as a rain pours down here. Well, it's an unwelcome enough environment for visiting teams without the rain coming down, as it is in droves again here. But as Andy Gray wipes the grease off the ball, he'll look to get maximum distance on this throw-in. And he really does propel it in there. King Clancy. He can expect the full treatment from the home fans. And he slipped a beautiful ball through, and Gray's missed it. It's Nicky Summerby! And Gray showed great strength to get back at Summerby, but he's injured himself in the process. That was a glorious chance for Nicky Summerbay. He'll be very disappointed with himself. He'd made a great run. King Clancy had loads of time. Mistake here by Andy Gray, there's no doubt about it. But watch how he recovers. Summerbay, I thought, should have got across him. But Gray, superb defending. And unfortunately gets clattered by his own keeper, Keeley. Well, this is a very worrying sight indeed for Barry because uh, Andy Gray, since he came in on the free transfer from... Falkirk in the summer has really been one of the revelations, playing in the sweeping role, or certainly starting there. Stan Turnant, his manager, said it would depend how the match was going and how Manchester City lined up as to whether he would stay in that role. But his prime concern at the moment is whether he'll have Gray for the rest of the game. It doesn't look too clear for him at the moment. Yeah, it was a last gasp effort, wasn't it? Kylie was flying out. Some of you just hesitated. 
Well, let's hope Gray's okay for Berry. With this rain coming down on, it's so difficult to surface. The ball will skid. Ripped in corner. And it clears. Some have been driving it again and then missing with his second kick. Jason Van Blerk. And this is Kit Simons. In slides Brannan and gets the throw in off Ian Hughes. Jed Brannan. He got two goals in that win at Nottingham Forest. Yeah, what a win that was for City. But they must follow up with something tonight. Here's Van Bloek. Simons. Clearance by Butler. Clancy looking towards Bradbury. Okay. Ketty this time flung himself in the way. I think what's interesting here, Rob, is Stan Terman has decided not to man to man Mark Georgie from Clancy. And we'll see if that's successful. I think maybe it's suicidal if he's in the mood. Crossed by Van Blurk as well beyond Bradbury. Armstrong had enough confidence to let that one go. Interesting game tonight. No, this great defensive red. I just wonder if Lee Bradley's saying, right, this is a night I'm going to break my duck. He works tremendously hard. That's why he's in and Rosler's out. He puts himself about this fella, but boy, does he need a goal. It's his sixth league start for Manchester City. And he scored on his sixth league start for Portsmouth. That was his first league goal for them, his first club against Crystal Palace. Important that he breaks his duck soon, though, from a point of view of confidence. Yeah, I think if Summer is a good game tonight and Kinkladzi has enough of the ball, Bradbury will certainly get chances tonight. Edgehill with a throw, good to see him back after that lengthy layoff with serious injury. Kinkladzi. And the experienced Gordon Armstrong. Long spell with Sunderland, got into the uh, top division with them and was actually on their staff when they were relegated by Manchester City. Many people, many people feel Barry a little bit too direct, you know, they love to get it forward quickly, but you know, surely they can't get promoted again, you know, the first team ever to do it. And I think Stan Turner, realistically, they can stay in Division 1, it's uh, a great achievement. David Morley. Just 19 years of age, Morley. He'll be 20 later this month. Massive night for him. Preferred to the experienced Paul Beasley, who is in reserve. Johnson taking a tumble. And Johnson and uh, some will be there again. Yeah, I think he's someone will be again in the wars there. Johnson. Johnson was certainly pressurising. Mean, let's have a look. Was there an arm up here? Some of it. Well, look at this. He can't get away with that. And Nicky Summer be. Yeah, it's a derby. We all know that. But look at that. If he'd have caught Johnson in the face, I'm sorry. Look where the ref is. He's off. Johnson. Edge Hill this time went into the back of him. Johnson getting a bit of a battering early on. <laughs> yeah, he was quick to close Somerby down, but he didn't expect the left hook to come out. <laughs> the left jab, I should say. Ketty has gone forward for the free kick. Ray the take up. After all, on the attack, Johnson went for it, cleared by Edge Hill. John Rose putting the pressure on Brannan. Yeah, that was a, I'm afraid that was a. A little bit late there from John Rose. There's no doubt about it, he's caught Brannan. Just a little bit late going for the ball there. There was no elbow, it was a, it was a straight clash of heads. The ball goes high in the air, and watch this. Up go the heads, bang. And Brannan comes off the worst. Gets to the ball first, Jed Brannan. But, boof, clatters into him. And 
with uh, head injuries, it's uh, right and proper that the physios are straight on, and the physios have been very busy men in the opening seven minutes. But uh, Andy Gray, who was treated on the Berry side, certainly seems to have shrugged off his injury. Yeah, he looks all right. That's going to be an interesting contest. Will Summer be trying to sprint forward at the quick, you know, as quick as possible to try and join Bradbury? And Andy Gray, I think he's in for a tough night. Well, fortunately, all seems well again with uh, Jed Brannan. The rain absolutely lashing down here. Yeah, wouldn't you see her? slight correction is that it's blowing into City's faces. But just how much of a disadvantage that is remains to be seen. Ball up. Morley. Too long for some of them. Yeah, a little bit difficult on your dead, you know, it's, it's local derby and suddenly you'll be feeling nervous, don't worry about that, the nerves will be jangling. He's a big lad and I wonder if that's why Frank Clark thought, right, you play alongside Kit Simons to cut out Berry's aerial threat. Well, of the teams that were promoted from the second division last season, Berry certainly seemed to have uh, settled quicker than Stockport and Crewe. They know how to look after themselves, if they win tonight they could go into the top five of the very early league table. Well, he's been saying earlier, surely they can't get promoted again, but who knows? Stan Turner has worked miracles for this club. It would be a historic achievement if they were to go from the bottom to the top in successive seasons. This one's in Wimbledon, both did it before. Another strong challenge which the referee's concerned about. This one has been committed by Peter Swan. I'll tell you what, Phil Richards, um, He's letting this game go here, because I thought for sure a yellow card's coming here. I think it's a follow-through, but maybe the referee's deciding, with all this rain, that he slipped rather than meant to follow through. Personally, I thought Swanee was a little bit luckier now. Here's Jason Van Blurk. And there's a little shove on Lachetti by Lee Bradbury. Yeah, he's a strong lad, Bradbury, good upper body strength, puts himself about, but again, Phil Richards, the ref, right on the spot. Berry's excellent run has been founded on very good defence, very solid defence. Eight clean sheets in their last 11 games, speaks for itself. Johnson getting the flick. It's Peter Swan. I just thought Swan there didn't realise the time he had, Rob. It was a nice ball from Johnson, drilled it in, and had Swan realised he was in open space, he could have taken a touch and perhaps spun on it. Look at that, no one near him. Now by Beacons on Nicky Dawes. Here's Andy Gray with a free kick. Looking for the strength again of Swan, cleared by Edgehill. John Rose. Here's Lachetti. Simon's coming across, but hasn't really dealt with it. Van Blurk trying to stick to his guns there against Johnson. Here's Dawes. He's looking to pick out Armstrong. Dangerous header back. Swan looking to nip in. Well, no doubt about it. Swan is a threat, isn't he, with his aerial strength? And I just feel maybe Kit Simons has got to take the charge here and say to Morley, I'll mark, and you perhaps find the knockdowns. A dangerous header there by Simons. It's Battersby. Swan couldn't really get enough on it. Simons with a clearance. Yeah, good pressure from Berry. He tried to get a good touch early on in the match, but we haven't seen anything from the last ten minutes. It's because of this Berry pressure, hunting and packed, getting the foot in. The City can't find this little fella. 
And for a side built for around the £600,000 mark, Berry may have their limitations, but they have great spirit, great battling qualities and great pressure here being applied. Swan, Batson's been looking to get on the end of it, Simon's between him and Johnson. Well, there's no doubt Berry are winning the 50-50s at the moment, Rob. Butler, neatly taken away from Bradbury. Armstrong's header. And Brandon really got in the way of his man, Kit Simons, there, but it worked out all right for him. Yes, it have just got to calm it down a little bit. It's all too hectic for the footballing side. Berry are hassling, getting the ball forward quickly. City have got to calm it down and get the ball to feet. Well, Mansfield were the last team to win here in the league some 17 months ago. April 1996. And since then, it's been a very impressive run by Berry. Long clearances towards Swan. Morley's tidying up. Well, Ketty with a long ball there. Read it well, but the ball was a little bit too long. But Berry play this way, even if it's not accurate, Rob. They like to progress, they get it forward, they chase after it, and like to progress. And then this fella here, Swan, he'll be looking for the ball in the box. City have been on the back foot for much of the opening quarter of an hour. And Gray keeping them pegged back in and around the edge of their own area once more. Looking for Swan, but Simons flings himself in the way. Lachetti. Here's Gray, three in the box. Johnson went for it, and it was a brave dive by Martin Margotson. Yeah, I think that's a great save, you know, because Johnson got the other side of the City defence. And Margotson had to take his eye off the ball. Don't forget, the ball's wet. Skidding off the greasy surface. But look at Johnson getting in there. Maybe a hint of offside. But I tell you what, the goalkeeper kept his eye on the ball. And that's a good, brave save from Margotson. Margotson knew that had he spilled that, there were three Berry players in there who would have been only too grateful to pick up on the rebound. Johnson was the closest to the goalkeeper, but Battersby and Swan were also in there. Kit Simons. And Luck. Too short for Hullock. Brilliantly for him by Hughes, Gray, unable to provide the cross, couldn't get past it, Simons. Yeah, he tried to get an early ball in there, Johnson again was at the far post, Gray spotted him, but Simons sticking to his task. Now Gray trying his luck with a throw in from the other side. Aim for Butler, but it's back. Out to Horlock. Here's Gray. Straight through Horlock's legs. <laughs> Tremendous kill there from Gray. I thought for a minute there he was going to stamp on the City Van Blair number three. But great skills from Gray. No wonder if the home fans like him so much. Lovely little twist and turn, a little nutmeg to go along with it. Good skill. Now watch a little touch through the through the legs. Horlock can't do often. In comes Van Blair, and I thought Gray was going to just land on him there. Well done, Gray, pulled out of there. No doubting the quality of Andy Gray. One cap for England against Poland in Poznan. And really surprisingly, having reached the uh, international pinnacle with his debut, as after that, that his career seemed to go downhill. Morning. Edgehill has made the charge. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think the referee might be right here, the linesman was flagging. And the simple reason there was I think Battersby was all over Edgehill, wasn't looking at the ball. And the linesman was very, very quick to have the flag up there to point that out. Good break from Edgehill, good ball from Morley. City players in the box, they're queuing up for it. Bradbury was amongst those in that cluster. 
Any ball near, swirling wind to it, giggling as well. Look at that ball moving there. No City putting a bit of pressure on Berry. Frank Clark's top team top must be come on guys you know they're going to be physical they're going to battle us let's match them for the battle and hopefully our skills will come through if you don't match teams this for the battle they'll get on top of you Fikens this is Brannan from Clancy just beyond Nicky Summerby yeah. and with those who Wondered about the wisdom of sticking King Clubs in after possible travel fatigue. Still really to bring his influence to bear on this game and really Barry have thrown everything forward in this game. Yeah, it's no surprise to me, Rob. You know, Barry have really pressurised City. But now City have weathered the storm, if you like. Let's see if they can get the ball down and play. It's a horrible night here, you have to say. It's the wind swirling about, the rain bucketing down. I think the crowd are enjoying this one. And it was a fixture they looked for as soon as the lists were published at the start of the season. Eagerly awaited game, almost treated like a cup tie. Away with the latest free kick. And Marcus and flamboyantly leaving it. He doesn't often waste too many. Shaking his head, disappointed. Craig, have you seen glad to give the ball away twice? I don't want to have who was playing in the uh, Scottish Cup final at the uh, end of last season for Paul Kirk. <laughs> Beacons. Lachetti. The city with so many midfielders struggling at holding it. Well, Berry are certainly getting to the ball first, I feel. And the likes of Horlock can't really get forward enough. And King Cladsey, well, great on the ball. King Cladsey and Horlock were both away on international duty in the week. Horlock with uh, Northern Ireland against Albania in Zurich. I don't think we want to mention that result, Rob. <laughs> Very disappointing for the Irish. Headers by Battersby. Morley to Van Blerk. John Rose. This is Ian Hughes. Vikings tussling away with him. It was interesting, me, Vikings, a Dutchman here. I, I didn't think he was a, would relish the physical battle. I thought he was more of a player. But he's, he's rolled his sleeves up here tonight. He's got a few crunching tackles in. Showing us he's got a little bit of steel. For all of the uh, foreign imports, this is a real welcome to English football tonight. Rain lashing down on the facilities here at uh, Gig Lane. Double back across with by Lecchetti, and the goalkeeper came through the crowd. It's cleared by Horlock in the end. Gray urgently taking over from Armstrong, looking for Battersby. Edge Hill was there. Yeah, the ball again held up in the wind. You talk about the weather, Rob. If you're going to come to Italy, it's best to come this time before Christmas. You won't be able to come in here in January, February. This is like a summer's day to I believe what it can be like. Oh. Is that sleep? Not a pleasant evening. There's Johnson. Gray. He's hit it in low and swung. Couldn't have been very far away from it. Well, he's, he's disappointed again, Gray, but I think City have got to start closing down a little bit because they know Berry's game plan. As soon as they get a chance, they put it in the box. So City's midfield have got to work and close them down. Edge Hill. Sliding tackle was from David Johnson. Ed Hill, who uh, made his return against Nottingham Forest with his 50th league appearance for Manchester City. And his uh, return very much well-timed with Ian Brightwell out ill and Tony Vaughan having 
injured ankle ligaments in the reserve match. Well, let's get forward quick. Maybe delighted to be back in the side. I just wonder if there's buried pressure. They're going to sneak one before half time, Rob. Continuous balls in the box. It just needs to fall to a white shark that's in the back of the net. Harry never watching and uh, wisely taking cover. David Johnson, who's a former Manchester United player and played with Gary Neville's brother Phil in the youth team. What hard. Just a bit of threat as well. Well, there's your brolly, mate. <laughs> Johnson didn't make a senior appearance for Manchester United, but he was part of that uh, FA Youth Cup winning team back in 1995. Warlock to Simons. Warlock again. And Blurk had stayed on side. And Clancy. Now we're going to see some magic from him. Always capable of prizing open the most solid of defences and Warlock just unable to fasten onto it. Yeah, George, he's just waiting for a run there. You know, go on, someone give me a bit of movement. Harwick gave him it, but the ball wasn't good enough. I wonder if that was just a little teaser of what's ahead from Georgie Kinkladze. Well, that's where he loves the ball, Rob. Anywhere around that 18 yard line, he weaves his magic. Morley. Adbury immediately under pressure from Armstrong. Here's Vikens. Kinkladze again. This time it's Butler he's taking on, and this time he's got the cross in. Now can Brad return, Brannan. Good defending again from Berry. Really hard to get back in numbers, Rob. Or it was who made the challenge. Deacons. Orlock had made a run along the line, he was aiming it to Bradbury though, Lecati was there. This is Simons. City have been over the last few minutes gradually asserting themselves, but that was a great challenge from Swan to win possession back. A little bit disappointed with Lee Bradbury at the moment, he's hold up player Rob. He's up there on his own, and you really have to hold the ball up and give your midfield players a chance to come up. But at the moment, his touch has let them down, he's losing possession too easily for me. He's used to playing that lone throw, it's a role he fulfilled to good effect against Nottingham Forest in the victory in the last match. Put of King Clads, he was a little high there on Andy Gray, and it's punished. Yeah, I don't think he realised Andy Gray was so close to him. King Clads are there, but Gray quickly on, onto the ball there. Good flick from Bradbury this time. Here's Gray with a free kick. No, he's going to leave it instead to Dean Kiley. So everyone except Kiley now in the opposing half. But, no, but Swan got a touch to it. Yeah, someone's got to sort out Swan. Swan, I think, out of maybe four or five headers, I think he's not lost one. So I think Simons and Morley have got to get to grips with him because it just needs a little flick on, and the likes of Johnson getting on the end of it. This time, he could direct the touch on. Scored in the last two games as Peter Swan against Crewe and Tranmere. Yeah, they've got to keep batting away, pounding away at City. The City start to settle, knock the ball, the confidence grows. They go searching for a goal. I thought that was a bit high. And there's Lucchetti, who was the offender, and Bradbury, who felt the full force of it yeah, well, on the shoulder. I don't think there's any arguments here. There's no doubt about Lucchetti. He goes, he tries to, but you know, that's, that's almost down his neck, isn't it? And it's a bad place to give a free kick away. And that's dangerous. He definitely catches Bradbury. And what can King Clancy do with this one? Well, Chris Lichetti has got away with a warning. 
for that challenge, but now King Kladzi trying to weave his way through once more. Giving doors the run around. Then playing it too short for Sonnaby, and Johnson stole in. Well, I thought King Kladzi was going to flip it in the box there. Just run out of options, give it back Sonnaby. Sonnaby had no call from a teammate, man on. Deacons. Butler with a clearance. Here's Brannan. And this is a useful break from Van Vlerk. Butler sliding in. <laughs> he's a bit unlucky there, isn't he? he gets, he's always going to get the ball first. I think he's lucky he got a corner here, by the way, Van Vlerk. Because I think Butler comes over here and gets the ball back off Van Vlerk. Every time a City player gets to it, uh, an opponent is across so quickly to close them down. Marshall there resources so well. Here's King Kladzi. Plenty of players in the box for Brannan, and he's got it across. And there was a free header on for Morley had it just been at the right sort of height for him. And it's quite a tall lad as well, he stayed in the box. And to be honest, that's a let off for Berry. Just over, slightly over hit, but look at Morley, nobody is marking him. And Stan Turner will be disappointed. You want to see uh, so much freedom for an opposing player in the penalty area for Berry. And City really, after a shaky start when they were put under a lot of pressure, have gradually started to assert themselves in this game. And draw a bit of the sting. And making some promising openings, Hall up whipping this one across, good safe handling by Fowley. Yeah, it had to be, because Vikings was powering in the box, and Somerby also was at the far post. Good goalkeeping. Just sense that Berry have lost a little bit of the initiative that they had in the opening 20 minutes or so. Yeah. Doors. Has been up there ahead of Van Blurk. Swan has made the run, he's left it open for him. Morley was struggling to get back, but did get back in the end. Well, oh, half a gig's lane was saying, Go on, strike it, hit it with a left peg. Just overran the ball. City have grown in confidence here. Berry, the long ball game. You know, they look for the early goal. It hasn't happened, and City now beginning to look more comfortable. Clancy. Vikings. Simons. The two David Morley. And Blurk. and made his run belatedly and uh, John Rose have gone with him. Yeah, one or two of the, I think one or two of the sitting midfield players have got to start taking chances, Rob, and getting forward. There was a lovely space in the gully and eventually, you know, all it gets over there and Branham's trying to get forward but someone's got to make an early run to expose him behind the Berry defence. Frank Clark making notes for uh, half-time, no doubt. Be a little more encouraged by his team's performances. Uh, certainly after the Forest game, they were on a high, and Clark himself never lost confidence, even during that uh, dodgy opening. Didn't want all the uh, good pre-season work to go to waste. And he has really introduced an element of stability here to what was a very unstable club last season. Yeah, he doesn't want to get, you know, it's, it's, we keep saying it's early days yet, you know, six, seven games gone, but you, there's a bit of a gap opening up at the top there, and City can't afford to let it grow. Well, City last won promotion from this division back in 1989, and they didn't win in their opening four games then, just as they didn't this time round. But then they embarked on a five-match winning run, and they'll be hoping for something similar to really propel themselves into the frame. 
Morley. This is Bradbury. Edge Hill. Beacons. This is Van Blurk. Johnson came back and the referee was quite happy with the challenge he made on Jason Van Blurk, who's done well to win it back and find King Cladzi. Some will be waiting at the edge of the area. Bradbury at the edge of the six-yard box. The challenge was Andy Gray's. Yeah, good challenge as well from Gray. You know, Stan Turner's obviously said, when he gets the ball, you can't dive in. And Gray jockeys him superb. And there goes the challenge. to Edge Hill. Ball up to Brannan. He's away from Gray, but just when he thought he'd shaken him off, Gray is there, concedes the corner. Good play from Brannan as well. Brannan was the one who won the ball, the goalkeeper came, Brannan headed it down, it gave Bradbury just a half chance. And I'm looking to get underneath it, it skims... Well, it seemed to skim off Lenny John Rose's head, but the referee's given the goal kick. <laughs> Little smile there. Again, the wind playing its part. Look at it curling the ball. The referee was right in the spot, so he felt it certainly came off a City player, but you can see clearly that should be another corner. Berry have gone a bit quiet now, Rob. City, more possession, pushing forward, more eager. Eakins. Edge Hill. Some of just couldn't get there. Armstrong did. Simons, no chance has been taken by him. Nationwide League football coming up for you this weekend. Birmingham against Sunderland, a clash towards the top end of the table. Sunday at 12 noon on Sky Sports 2, followed by the Premiership action in Super Sunday. Blackburn against Leeds on Sky Sports 1 from 3 o'clock. Johnson's cross. Simons. Bradbury. Challenging by John Rose. Bradbury will give chase for it. Kylie was always the favourite to get there, though. And flag raised very belatedly, which is the cause of the anger. <laughs> well, it's a highly charged game at the moment. Thunder and lightning all around us as well, even though the rain has stopped now. Just across over that stand, the Pennines, but the linesman, he's adamant. Forget it, guys, that was offside. And the booze ring out. Well, they've got all methods of uh, keeping dry on a night like this, and that's one of the less orthodox ways. I, I Looks a bit like you, Alan. I don't believe it. I tell you what, you get a bit cheeky, <laughs> Luna. Here goes Battersby. Johnson making a surge into the box. Can he go long? Off the post! Best chance of the game so far, falling to Tony Battersby, and he made it and almost took it himself. Well, ten minutes ago, he was in the same position, wasn't he, on the left foot? He delayed it, he didn't let go. But this time he lets go, and he's very unlucky. That was almost the opener. Very unlucky from Battersby. Edge Hill. In Cladzi. Tell you what, Rob, I wasn't sure Madison had it covered either. And it looked as though it could sneak in at that post, but uh, Battersby shot just coming back off the woodwork. Yeah, Margaretson 
maybe I'm sure he's disappointed with the room Battersby had coming in field again. Oh, that was a risky back header from Morley with Battersby there, and Swan couldn't force his way through. Battersby shot though, still the closest that either side has come to scoring. The one that hit the woodwork. Yeah, he's unlucky here. Comes inside lovely, gets it on the left foot. This time let's fly. And I tell you what, I think that had Margaretson beat just about what, 17 yards out. Not, not the greatest of strikes, but that's unlucky. That can easily have slipped in. Well, the game has swung this way and that, and at the moment it's Berry ending the first half the stronger. King Clancy. Gray really hasn't given him much room. Lachetti. Well won by him, that's Dawes. Van Blurk. So what Van Blurk there. I cannot I can't believe how many defenders let a ball bounce like that. You've got to get to it first. This time he gets away with it. As soon as that bounces, it gives the forwards a great chance. Dawes. Morley in the way. It really has been a fairy tale rise for Berry under Stan Turner. Two years in permanent charge next Thursday. The team were in desperate uh, stage really when he took over, but they've had two promotions since. Yeah, Van Blurk's angry here, Rob. He feels that Battersby ran into him. Battersby claiming there was a contact. There was a bit of tugging and pulling, wasn't there? But there. And well, the ref's given it along with his linesman. This is danger for City again, an aerial threat. Swan will be a massive threat here. Ray's free kick is a deep one. Oh, right, it was Armstrong's header, and all it needed was a touch from Swan, who was in there. Yeah, Armstrong at the far post there rises well, doesn't he? It's, I think it's Morley who just can't get off the ground. Armstrong gets a leap first, that's a good header. Another injury problem here. It's Kevin Horlock for City who's limping. Yeah, I'm saying it was uh, Morley there, but I think it's Horlock who got underneath the ball. And I thought Armstrong, that was a good header, just needed a touch on the end of it. And continues to uh, hold off. Tommy Wright is only just back after injury, but was with Northern Ireland in the week. I've been impressed with this guy, Marguson. Been on City staff a while, but has had to wait a long time for his opportunity. Edgehill powerfully making the case and finding King Cladsey. Bradbury's in the box. Beacons supporting the attack. King Clancy curling it towards Bradbury, cleared to Beacons. Yeah, that's a nothing ball from Beacons, absolute nothing ball. When the ball came back to him there, I thought he's going to whack this. As soon as he take a touch, he's always going to be closed down, but again, the pass was way off target. Armstrong. Morley. Was under pressure from Hughes snapping away behind him. Swan's touch. Here's Edge Hill. Summerby. Left by Gray. Here's Van Bloek. Jed Brannan, King Cladsey, Brannan, away from Gray, and the shot deflected off Lachetti. Yeah, deflected shot from Brannan, good skills again. Getting a little nutmeg in, suddenly decides, right, no one's closing me, I'll strike it. Hits Lachetti, and the keeper got down smartly to touch it round. 
Ahmed Sabri wins the corner in. It was a tricky one. Vikings off the line. Vikings denied by a goal line clearance, and then King Kladzi fouled. Arab, why the Berry fans were up in arms. Look with the ball. When Sabri took the corner, the ball again wasn't in the arc. Off the line. Goodness me, there'd be some argument if that goal had gone in. I saw King Clancy do it a few weeks ago. Some of it is who whips in the free kick clear to Kevin Horlock, who can hit them. And he tried to hit that one through the crowd, and the crowd just took the sting out of it. Yeah, it came off Swan. Swan was the blocker. But as you said, Horlock can hit them. Well, Manchester City, I don't know why they do this. When they take corners, they always seem to just move the ball out of the arc. And the Berry fans were disgusted. They were almost disgusted again there when uh, Beacon's handball was about to go unpunished. But uh, the assistant referee drew the referee's attention to it. Beacon's, who has been the closest Manchester City player to breaking the deadlock with that effort. And it really is a seesaw of a game. Either way, this could go. Gray, John Rose, and Block. Beacons. Horlock hitting it against Armstrong. Johnson could be through here. Morley tried to force it wide, and he still got the shot in. That's a good right-handed save. Goodness me, strong right hand there from Margotson. Johnson again, he's a farm on the side at the moment, but Margotson downs his right-hand side. Quality save. Good closing again, the ball fell with Johnson, right foots across the goal. And there's a strong right wrist. Good stop from Margotson. City again, just caught napping. Good strike and a good touch. The goalkeeper at full stretch, turning away Johnson's shot. One up for the free kick. Hughes. In comes Brannon. Hughes just couldn't bring it under control. Yeah, see, they've just got to calm down again there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Imagine a six-second rule. <laughs> Goalkeepers just can't relax now, can they? It's real hair and scare and stuff at the moment. Yeah, it's a good finish to the first half from Berry, the home side. John Rose looking to pick out Battersby. Van Blurk is across with him. A strong Peter Swan in the box if he can find him. Too short for him, Edge Hill clears. And Robertson can't save the corner. I think Edge Hill's there saying to Van Blurk, come on, close him down. Don't give him time to get the cross in. The defender, he's too far away. He's two yards away from Battersby. He's got to get closer and stop the service in the box. And a minute into stoppage time. Berry's first corner of the first half could well be their last opportunity to break the deadlock before the break. Swan the target, and a missed kick by Simons that put the goalkeeper under pressure, and they're all in there battling, trying to force it in. <laughs> and Margotson was bundled into the back of the net. Well, the fans around as well. <laughs> we'll try to suck that one in. That's a good header again from Swan, isn't it? This is a bad clearance. Up in the air from Simons. Let's have a look. Margotson comes. There's the challenge, and the arm was all over Margotson. The referee's dead right. And ends up in the back of the net for his troubles. Good header again from Swan. But Simons with a bad clearance. And the goalkeeper certainly was fouled. Armstrong it was, who was applying that very strong pressure he saw an opportunity, didn't get the ball in the net, but uh, did get the goalkeeper in the back of the net. Just thinking now, Frank Clark at half-time, will he change it? Bradbury up front, he's really been struggling to hold it up, and the City midfielder has been slow to go up and help him. I just wonder if he's thinking, OK, do we, do we go up for another 15 minutes into the second half, or do we push someone up alongside him? Maybe Rosler will get his chance. Well, only a few more minutes of deliberating, and 
wonder if we will see Uwe Rosler come on at some stage in the second half. And there goes the half-time whistle, very nil, Manchester City nil. It's a game that has all the elements. Tony Battersby having hit the post for Berry with a real strong opportunity. Jared Beacons having Manchester City's best effort with a shot cleared off the line david johnson forcing a good save from martin margerton in a strong end to the first half from the home team but it's nil nil at half time second half let's rejoin our commentators alan brazil and rob Hawkel. well quite a tough task facing manchester city if they are to uh, win here tonight the only time that uh, berry have gone behind in the last 19 league games here was on the opening day of the season against Reading. Let's hear from their manager, Stan Turner, with Alan Bentley. Stan, a thunderous first half in more ways than one. Are you happy with them? Yeah, it's a good match. It's tight. End-to-end uh, -end stuff. We're in there with a good chance still. Peter Swan seems to have them in the air at the back. How are you making the most of that? Um, well, we've got to get a little bit more ball, really. And if we can do that, then we may just have a, a bit better chance of getting the goal. But we've got to keep our shape and our balance and concentration because it's a good game for us. But they're doing very well at the moment. Thanks a lot, Stan. Thanks a lot. A satisfied Berry manager. And it'll be his team to kick off in this second half. Yeah, what we want, Rob, is a nice early goal. But who will be the provider? Peter Swan has made his uh, presence felt up front. And at the back with his uh, clearing header off the line from Gerard Vikins. But uh, there's no doubt that when Berry win a free kick or a long throw, Swan is the man that the City defenders are looking to, and he could cause them real problems. Yeah, I think Simons has got to just take the, the responsibility to say, when the ball comes in the box, I'll have him. In the meantime, no changes by Manchester City in terms of uh, personnel. Lee Bradbury still ploughing that lone furrow. While Uwe Rossler waits on the bench. Here's Gordon Armstrong. Chris Lachetti. Barely a minute into the uh, second half. Manchester City are poised to make a change, but uh, it's not the introduction of Uwe Rossler we're anticipating, but this man, Tony Scully, because it seems that... Uh, Jason Van Blood has a problem. I just wonder, yeah, it's interesting the thought. You know, the substitution and they've done at half time. Unless you see him, we'll have a couple of minutes and just see if you can run it off. Ricchetti. I think from the pit and Berry point of view here again, it's same game plan, close down, pressure. Get the ball forward. Well, that's City. Come on, let's battle them for ten minutes. Take the sting out of them and let's play football. Well, they're not going to give uh, Jason Van Blerk any more time to uh, run off that injury, so very early in this uh, second half, the Australian makes his departure and Tony Scully is coming on to take his place. Yeah, muted applause from the City fans. Pretty sure, and they were hoping maybe it was Uwe Rosler that was coming on. Scully, the former Crystal Palace man who was signed on a free transfer. Great. Here's Vikings. Edgehill finding Bradbury, and the return is too short. Nicky Dawes there. Cleared by Morley. There's Butler with a throw in. Bradbury. Gray and King Cladsey looking to follow this one through and a header away by Kylie. Ray's back pass just fell short. 
Brandon looking to work the opening, cleared by Lachetti. Well, a good start to the match for City. I just, I just had a feeling there, Georgie didn't fancy that one. <laughs> He's seen Kylie coming out, flying out. The little fella thought, oh, no, 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 that's not for me. <laughs> well, see how he usually is dangerous, and he's brought to ground a combination of Johnson and Hughes. And Scully doing well there, getting between the defenders. Good start of the match for him. And this is dangerous for City. Morley and Simons in the box, along with Bradbury. Some of it. Ticking Clancy. Beyond Beacons. Morley, the player coming in. He certainly had a chance there, didn't he? Came in very late, Morley. I thought City had perhaps overdone it again with a free kick. The King Clancy eventually, when he puts it in, it's right to the far post. Morley climbs. And well, from four yards, you really got to hit the target there. Towers above it at the centre half. Kylo looks on in anguish. Only a big, strong centre half. Challenged by Edge Hill on Battersby. And here's Nicky Somerville. In Clancy. I just felt Robbie could have given it back to Somerville there. Somerville kept his run going. Normally, can Clancy so quick to find the pass. Some of it. It's got away well from Armstrong. He ran straight into trouble. It was a good challenge from Butler. Yeah, he just took it too far there. Some would be unlucky. Good defending from Butler. Brown. Took out well by Dawes. This is Johnson. Swan going into the penalty area on his own. Yeah, good, good defending from Dawes, but Brannon, well, you think he just won that ball. This is good end-to-end -end stuff, surely a goal must come. Well, you think the way the second half has started that it can't be too long before the deadlock is broken. Raise a danger in these situations with the throw. Got Butler and Swan to aim at. Butler is the player who's gone for, but it's a powerful figure of Morley that meets it. Gray. down to Butler, but uh, Hughes's intentions didn't quite come off. A good pressure from Berry, but Morley, the young defender, making his senior debut, again with a good header. That's why he's in the side. Towering figure, a few moments ago, had a chance at the other end. Player uh, who's come through the ranks, uh, David Morley, and on a couple of occasions has turned up in useful areas in the opposing area. Thompson's header on. Warlock this time covering against Battersby, who's already proved what a danger he can be with the shot that hit the post in the first half. Given away by Vikings. This is Swan. Butler. This is where City are struggling. When the ball goes up to Bradbury, he does win them. There's no one, he's isolated. There's no one around them except three Berry centre halves. Someone's got to take the chance and get up alongside this fella. And will that mean a change in direction and a change in personnel? Uwe Russell hope so, he's still kicking his heels. That break. Doors. This is Butler. Kevin Horlock, who switched to left back since the departure of Van Blurk. Some of it. And Clancy. And the round Paul Butler, who's still chasing back. McKetty across to mark him now, but still King Clancy goes on. Great magic from King Clancy, and he's gone down as he does so regularly. And as he does so regularly, he's won the penalty. Wow, what can you say about this fella? 
He's got his doubters. People say sometimes a luxury. God, I can watch this all night. This is superb for the little fella. He's thrown me three dummies sitting in the seat here. And that's a penalty. Brilliant play from Pinkladze. Nothing on. Decides to take them all on. There's a challenge, yeah. He does go a bit high, but you can't challenge him in the box like that. Superb. Well, Pinkladze won a penalty and scored it against Sunderland in the 3-1 defeat. He's won a penalty here. And we'll take this, but uh, just as there was with the corner in the first half, there's a question mark about where he's placing the ball to take it. It's King Clancy against Kylie, who saved two penalties last season. Can he stop this one? Yes, he can! He mm -hmm. saved the crucial one of Watford at the back end of last season, and he stopped Georgie King Clancy this time. Would you believe it? even more of a hero than he was already here at Gig Lane. Kinkladze was certainly the man they feared coming into this game, but even from the penalty spot, Kylie denied him. Oh, I'd have put my house on that one. But good movement from Keeley, and you have to say it's a poor penalty. Kinkladze going to wrong foot him. Good stop. How did I do that, he says. And Kylie has made Kinkladze utterly distraught and here he goes again trying to repair the damage and you what a run it was <laughs> oh, what a run city fans are they're astonished how can our, our king miss that well even the berry fans can admire the run now that he's missed the penalty this is a good contest to join this how much Half has gone out of Manchester City, having seen that if course looked in the map. Yeah, the, acknowledging the Berry fans, Dino, Dino, the shouting. Good stop, mate. Dean Kiley, who really has been the solid figure on which this Berry defence has been founded. Very rarely misses a game, hasn't missed one since he came to Gig Lane. And here is King Kladzi again, trying to make up for the frustration of that missed spot kick and taking out his frustrations in a positive manner on Andy Gray. I tell you what, he needs a couple of cartilages after that, Andy Gray. <laughs> Here's Brannan. Good by John Rose. Simons. Edge Hill. Simons again. Summerbay looking to turn away from Armstrong, but Butler was covering. Yeah, City turning on the heat now, aren't they? Come on, he said, let's get the open goal. Growing in confidence. Well, you'd have thought their grip might have been loosened with the missed penalty. Mind you, it's just sport him up. More action, isn't it? I've got a feeling Kylie's going to be a little bit more busier. Somerby has done well to get that cross in, and Kylie relieved to see it flash in front of him. I don't know what Kylie was doing there, to be honest. And that was right across his goal line, wasn't it? Just under the crossbar. Somerby should be saying, well, come on then, Lee. You know, Bradbury, get on the end of these. It's a little bit close to the keeper. In fact, he does very well to get it in, but watch this. Over the keeper, he felt maybe it was going out. That was right along his crossbar. Could have a word with the assistant referee. Wonder if he thought it had bent out before it came back and across the face of his goal. Great. Oh, went away dangerously. This is Scully. Oh, too deep for Bradbury. Yeah, he just delayed it there, Tony Scully. Bradbury, he gave Bradbury time to get to the far post, but in the end, when he decided to cross, he couldn't get his foot round the ball. And again, this fella starved the service. Oh, how he'd love to have one right on his forehead. Armstrong. Johnson. 
they really just get pegged back now, aren't they? They're not getting really, they're not getting any shots on the City goal or dangerous crosses in. City's work rate has been excellent too. Well, the supporters have clearly been roused by Kylie's heroics. Armstrong. I reckon they go all the way and get the opening goal. Twice they went close in the first half, but they've not really made much of an attacking impression in the second period, Barry. Just wonder what's going through Frank Clark's mind now. Does he keep this going? Does he leave it? Or does he say, right, it looks as if the fizz has gone out of Barry. Let's maybe get another forward on. Then this argument with Rosal might be a lot deeper than what we think, Rob. Lucchetti. Johnson. Useful touch, this is Swan. Johnson's continued his run. Edgehill is stuck with him. David Johnson, got nothing on the shot, really. Well, he found the space as well, didn't he? It's a back spell from Benny now. City's defence really under pressure. This is Nicky Dawes. And this is an excellent run that's been made by Hughes. What a tackle by Morley this is. What a tackle from Morley. Superb. I thought Hughes was going to tuck this away. But watch the youngster. Had to make it. It's certainly hotting up again. Both sides sensing the win is there for the taking. This is Scully. Yeah, again, Bradbury went the far post. Tony Scully had time again, looked up, couldn't find a blue shirt. Bradbury once again peeling away. It's a great ball from Kinklati. Watch Bradbury. Is he going to go near post? And the ball was on. Now waiting for some of this corner. In it goes, Morley stuck himself right in front of the goalkeeper who did well to get there. Edge Hill. Pollock. Foul by Hughes. Well, I just feel City now with a little bit of luck in front of goal, Rob. I just feel now they could be, um, I think they're three points now. Looking for Bradbury, he's knocked it back across to Jeb Brannan. And after that desperate bit of defending, Morley tidying up against David Johnson. And once again, Bradbury looked fair, but he win that. There wasn't too many blue shots getting in that box alongside him. Only Brannan. Armstrong. Morley. It really is a game that could tip one way or the other. It's balanced on a knife edge at the moment. Stan Turner clearly wants to get on with it. Use with the throw. Decision in defence there. The youngster Morley making a bit of a big there. And Johnson's left foot shot just charged down. Morley just saying sorry to his keeper. He really could have done better here. A bit, a bit soft, a bit watery. And Johnson lets fly. Foiled by the deflection by Kid Simons. Bradbury's foot a little too high there on the Ketty. the hour mark and still nil nil but this an area where Berry could be a real danger if Ray or Armstrong can place the free kick the hopeful one cleared by Vikings Andy Gray well 
they look to cause panic and confusion every time with those high balls. Margotson had dealt with that one and now looks to cause some confusion of his own and Bradbury is attempting to latch onto it. And there was a shove in the back of Armstrong, says referee Richards. Yeah, it's a bit blatant to be honest. Armstrong defending. The ball again bounces, gives Bradbury a little chance, but there's certainly a shot there. City treating like with like, looking for the long ball to Lee Bradbury. Yeah, he's got a bit of stick from the home fans here, Bradbury. Well, that's just when strikers can pop up with a goal. Vikings. From Clancy. Yeah. Foul by Gray. That could be a yellow card drop. It is, and it's the first one of the night for Andy Gray. Oh, you know, he's a difficult customer, King Cladsey. But when you take, you know, when you tackle like that from behind, you're inviting the referee to reach in for the yellow card. Well, it is his third booking of the league season. It's actually his fifth booking overall, booked in both Coca-Cola ties as well. He can't get the ball there, can he? You can see he sweeps through with his right foot. I'm sorry, that's a yellow. And uh, two more of those, and he could be facing a suspension. Scully's just come on, but he's just got to get his final ball over. He's making the space for himself, but the final ball keeps hitting defenders. Oh, a mistake, and Johnson could be through here! And it's 1-0 to Murray! And David Johnson takes advantage of the defensive slip. And Berry get the lead! Well, gig lanes erupted. I, I thought this was a free kick. I think Horlock, there's definitely contact here. And I think Horlock gets to it first. Johnson catches him there. Or does he? Once again, it's a difficult decision for the referee. Horlock complaining. Let's have a look. He's definitely there. Was it a missed kick? Johnson takes his chance over the goalkeeper. And Berry go ahead. Just there. And that looks like a missed kick. And that is a goal. Berry fans ecstatic. It's the former Manchester United man who scores against Manchester City. And David Johnson really is in excellent goal scoring form at the moment. Kevin Horlock won't care to be reminded of that after his stumble was exploited fully. Johnson now has scored four goals in his last five matches. What was Kevin Holland thinking about there, Rob? He was such a bad player, so I thought he had to. Johnson had to have clipped his heels. But I don't think his contact would look for it three times. Kevin Holland, well, he's got to be very, very angry with himself. Holland, who was switched to left back with the injury to Jason Van Gogh, clearly now must feel he's been handed a poison chalice. Johnson's pace took him away from the defender, and didn't he finish it well? the keeper and he thought right a little lob over Margotson no chance David Johnson again this time haul up in the way and Clancy and Scully has made his move in the middle, comes back to Scully off Hughes, it's beyond Bradbury, Brannan is there, here's Beacons! And Kylie has already been the hero once with a penalty save, Royals Beacons too. Another good stop from the goalkeeper, because Beacons hits as sweet as a nut. Scully again, first cross hits the defender, now he hits us beautifully, OK, straight at Kylie, but the keeper makes it stick. And on a night like this, when it has been raining heavily at times, always been easy to challenge by John Rose on King Cladsey. This is some of it. King Cladsey's cross. And Bradbury's. Again, I think Bradbury's got you know, every chance of getting that. It was a good quality service in. And yet a very defender again beaten to it. Edge Hill. 
Bradbury wanted it played, but Edgehill thinks he can go through on his own. He's done extremely well, and it's headed away vitally by Ian Hughes. A great play from Edgehill, and surely a blue shot's got to be on the end of that, not a white one. And now Gray and King Kladzi getting tangled up with each other. Great play from Edgehill, though, wasn't it? Superb run. Surely a centre forward's got to get on the end of this. You've got to get, look, the, the, the Berry defender was down on the ground, still gets up and beats Bradbury to the ball. Hughes was the player who got himself in the way. I just feel Lee Bradbury, the longer he goes without a goal, sometimes, you know, you make your mind up, you get across the defender, but the defender fell down and still managed to scramble up and get in front of Lee Bradbury. He's got to get him with a hot. And Ferry making a change, and on comes Andy Woodward, the former crew man, and he's taken the place of Tony Battersby. Crew has, uh, Woodward has slotted in on that uh, right-hand side of midfield. This is Scully, the Manchester City substitute. This will be a great victory for Barry this one. Well, it'll be a phenomenal achievement for them even at this stage of the season to be right up there in the top five of the table. And you think they were promoted from the third division as the third place club? They did finish champions of the second division last season and they've done it with the basis of the uh, same team I'll tell what's interesting here rob gray's on the right ding dong would be uh king Cladzy. and andy gray's already been booked he's got to be very careful we give him a little clip there's a bit of lip going on as well out there he'll love that king Cladzy. you give him the ball in any that 18 yard line he'll entice gray into diving in Morley, Bradbury, there's a new man Woodward, Cute, and still, Scully trying to match him stride for stride, yeah, good work from Hughes. Wow, what a priceless goal this was from David Johnson. Yeah, it was really, you know, that is diabolical defending, you have to say that, I'm sorry, Kevin. But Johnson says, thank you very much, I love that one. Goalkeeper comes out in vain, they just lobs it in, Simons can do nothing. Beautifully uh, looped over Margotson by David Johnson. You have to say it really is a formidable defensive record that Berry have here. 20 clean sheets they've kept in the uh, 28 league games unbeaten here at Gig Lane. And it really is thanks to uh, this man tonight that they've managed to preserve it so far, although there is still 18 minutes left for them to hold out, but Kylie saved the penalty from King Kladzi and the uh, subsequent effort from Jared Beacons. I just feel Rosler's got to come on now, I think. Just give them a little bit of sparkle up front. I know there's problems between the manager and the player, but it's all about getting a point of three points here. And at the moment, Lee Bradbury, for me, is out of sorts. Still Rosler waits. Woodward. Nicky Summer we started the match very well, but he's drifted in and out. City need more down this right-hand side from him. Lucchetti. Morley. Beacons. This is Edge Hill. Brannan and Bradbury both going into the box. Scully in there as well. And he knocked it back, but the only player there was Andy Gray. 
Well, at the edge of the box, should someone be Vikensing and Kladzing? You can't uh, and you can't have three outside the box. Someone's got to take a chance and get on these knockdowns. to turn this around does the answer to his prayers lie with a substitute that he seems reluctant at the moment to bring on Uwe Rossler Johnson yeah City need something they need it quick Johnson, this is Woodward, the build up this from Berry. He's with the throw. I tell you what, it's Berry home side. The support is fantastic, what a noise it made. John Rose, he's got through! Good save by Margotson. Well, wow, that goes in, it's game set and match. Marcus Lennon, you can do, Kate Kiley, I can do. And John Rose worked his way in the box superbly here. Again, City a bit static, good stop from the keeper. Flick was by Swan, and Simon stuck himself in front of the goalkeeper, there couldn't have been a shout there. And I think he's saying you should have shouted. Yeah, Simon was unsure where his goalkeeper was, and when you're unsure, you can't take chances. Just get it out. But this is more pressure for City to try and soak up. It's been uncomfortable all night for the City defence with the big men going forward and inevitably they've piled all the big guns forward for this. Swan joined by Lachetti and Butler there. There's Armstrong. Kylie offering himself to Hughes. Header away was by Edge Hill. Now Bradbury. This would be the moment to make his mark. It's cleared by Woodward, but some of you like looking to get underneath it. Butler, though, again showing very strength in the air. Some of it. by Dawes. Dawes, one of the long-term survivors of Berry's great rise. King Clatty. Scully aiming it towards Lee Bradbury well, that's better from Bradbury and that's very unlucky that's better coming across the defender good ball at the box from Scully works the space again on the right foot curls it in Bradbury right across the defender and he just had to hit the target there and that didn't his first goal that's unlucky well, he must have thought then that that was his moment. But uh, that moment still awaits. And he's now approaching uh, 15 hours without a goal in competitive action. A Swan gets this one into Johnson, who scored already tonight. John Rose is in the box. It's blocked by Edge Hill. And here goes City on the break with Scully. Bradbury and King Clancy in the box. Scully working his way through. And he hit it strongly but wide. Oh, just for a minute there. 
I thought that was right in the back of the stanchion. And good play from Scully. Oh, he's, he's done well since he's come on. Really, he's got the defender on toast here, inside, outside. And in the end, well, it's well wide, isn't it? Just on the left foot, couldn't get his foot round it. It's not a bad effort. Good play from Scully, who, as I mentioned, was at Crystal Palace, and also amongst his X-Files. He was at Bournemouth and Cardiff on loan. That's X-Files. Oh, dear. starts again and more discomfort for Manchester City as Richard Edgehill not only gives away a free kick but gets booked for it as well it's a little bit unlucky there Edge, Edgehill I don't like that. sorry I don't think that's a booking still I'm not going to complain at our referee friends but that was not a booking <laughs> but it was too good to be true Reft it well, it's been an end to end game, isn't it? Yes, he uh, had some words of caution early on when one or two challenges were flying in, left it late before producing cards and sensibly handled. Ten minutes to go, Berry in the driving seat, Gray with a free kick, and not one of his better ones, headed away by Brannan. Stelly brought to ground by another substitute, Woodward. Berry have got another tremendous defence. But they're really going to have to be on their toes because City are going to take chances now. They're going to push everyone forward. And I think, I, I, again, I think that's what hard City. Here's King Clancy. Is he the man to find the opening? He's had the best chance so far from the spot. He's looking for Bradbury with this cross, but it's beyond him, and it took Butler to deal with it. Here's Summerby. Edgehill looking to keep the pressure on. to get the cross in and Butler is there. Yeah, just needed somebody to run to the near post there, try and get across Butler. And somebody who's got this knack of tight, tight angles and yet somehow he gets his right foot round the ball and gets him across. He just needed someone running across the near post. Even just to put the defender off. Deacons was going for it. And Clancy, big crowd ahead of him. Morley to Scully. Away from Hughes. He's won the corner off Gray. City pushing everyone forward now. Fucking Clancy was going to let fly there. He doesn't like giving the ball away. Unless he's sure. The Scully's a threat on the left. And it's Scully's corner. Oh, great header. And what a way to make your entrance. It's David Morley who scored it at a vital time for Manchester City. Well, I, I just had a feeling that had to come, Rob. Intense pressure and a debut goal for Morley. Towers above the Berry defenders and plants it in the net. Good ball again from Scully. Keeper nowhere. And bang, get in there. And now Berry is back to the wall. Curling ball from Scully. Morley with a header. Downward header. 1 1. Well, what a goal and what a moment for David Morley, unused substitute in the first couple of games of the season, given his big chance tonight because Ian Brightwell is out ill. And what a shrewd choice of replacement by Frank Clark. And now can City, having been revived by that, go all the way and win it. Morley, his nerves really must be jangling with excitement now. He's a big lad, isn't he? And he he showed, he showed the better defence earlier that he can leap for the ball. That's why Frank Clark played him. He's such a tall, commanding figure. Long one for Scully. He's done well. Has he to keep it in? Yes, he has. They were feeling that it had gone out, and in the end, it's given us a goal kick. He's definitely looked live on that left-hand side, hasn't he? But this fell on his debut. Oh, what a feeling he must have here. Scully's... Wicked curling cross. Morley 
gets up first, does it? Even with a hand on his shoulder, Morley get up, and Butler couldn't get near him. Now the City fans really giving it plenty. Well, Ronnie Jepson is coming on here for Berry, and the man who's been taken off is their goal scorer, David Johnson. Berry maybe thought that his goal would be enough, but they need another from somewhere now if they're to get the victory. Jepson might just give them a, you know, a, some more height in offence and defence. He's been around a bit as uh, Ronnie Jepson, 34 years of age now, but he's a, an experienced campaigner. Gray. There is Jepson. Jepson and uh, Edgehill involved in a little bit of a skirmish. Just letting Edgehill know that he's arrived. King Kiley must be so disappointed having saved the King Clancy penalty and then to see Johnson score, they must have thought that it was another clean defensive record tonight. They did have one off the line as well, Rob, so I think 1-1's one, pretty fair at the moment. I'm just thinking, who's going to get the winner? There's another goal to come. One man will be hugely relieved at the equaliser is Kevin Horlock. Maybe that uh, mistake that led to the Johnson goal won't be so costly now. Well, it was a howler, there's no doubt about it. And here he is, Horlock. Scully. Bradbury. Scully again, he's deserved a goal, and he's hit the post! Oh, dear, would you believe it? So much time, the little fella. And still the pressure on, some of the target this time, and he can't get there. I'll tell you what, Bradbury done well for him there as well, Rob. The Scully, he gave him, not a hospital ball, but he gave him a short pass. And Bradbury comes out, he shows, and somehow just gets there before the defender. Does well, Bradbury. But look at this, the time Scully's got now. And he goes to the near post when perhaps he should have gone for the far post. On the right foot, and he's unlucky. Made his uh, debut in the last game against Charlton as the substitute for uh, Eddie McGoldrick, or in a recent game, and uh, certainly really grabbed some of the limelight tonight already since his uh, introduction. He's been seriously testing the very fullback. Oh, Gray, who's already been cautioned. Really has to uh, watch his step here. There's no need for that, Mikey. You know, when you start flinging your arms about, no need at all. Now King Clancy trying to torment him again, and Gray, we've already said he is he's walking, he's walking a tightrope, and he's being called here towards Richards with the City fans imploring him to send Andy Gray off. Now, is he going to take a diplomatic decision here, or... Is he going to produce the second yellow card that would lead, lead to the inevitable red? I you think, think, think Gray's lucky morning. here. I think he's lucky there. It's because it's so close after being warned there with the arms flying. Pulling back from behind. He's a lucky man. But that's King Clancy for you. He gets a ball and he wriggles. His ability shielding the ball he is such a handful. And he's a handful from free kicks and he's poised to take this one, Georgie King Clancy. It is the Georgian, he's lined it up for Savi. Yeah, the ball just got a little bit away from Somerby there. And the crowd tonight, a sellout crowd, 11,216. It's the best crowd here at Gig Lane since April 1980. And they've certainly enjoyed it. It's been a cracking game. So what they've made some noise as well, Rob. We're right above the Berry fans. Really noisy, but now it's the City fans you can hear behind both goals. And they've had lean times of late, the City supporters, but they're a very loyal band. They turn out regularly at Main Road. They've got a very healthy following on their travels too. Both goals have been at their end because they're packed in behind both goals. Ronnie 
Jepsen for the City throw. Morley. Gray's ball. Summerby. This is Bradbury. This is Summerby. Cleared by Lachetti. There you have to get this away anywhere. They're hanging on a bit for the point at the moment. This is Horlock. And here's King Clancy to try his trickery once more. I'll tell you what, Horlock was in the box as well, all alone. In Clancy, I'm not sure if he tried the little clip. And handball given against David Morley. It's Simons. And King Clancy just unable to keep it in play. I tell you what, Rob, man of the match is always difficult. Now, this fella, I'm sick of giving him it, to be honest. <laughs> he's, he's showed us some sparkle again. And Keely in goals, Kylie, I should say, he's been superb. I'm going to give it a young centre-half who's brought City back into the game. On his debut, well done, son. David Morley, a night to remember for him. Hughes. Frank Clark can be grateful for the uh, decision that he made today. He can smile now, it's been a nervous night for City. And Stan Turnant, I wonder if he thought the points had been sewn up when David Johnson scored that goal. Both goals in the second half. Very pressing for a late winner, and Edge Hill pushes that out. A little shove in the back from Peter Swan. He's a mean looking customer, isn't he? <laughs> He's worked hard though. Won a lot of the aerial battles first half, Peter Swan. We're into stoppage time. Here's King Clancy. Hollock <laughs> had been trying to set Brandon away. Yeah, I think on reflection perhaps City. Maybe a little bit unlucky not to get all three points, but Barry worked so hard first half. There's not many teams that are going to come and win here. Well, they've got great resolve, and they're hoping that that spirit will help them to uh, consolidate in the first division this season against the teams with greater spending power. King Clancy. Gray, Butler, Morley, Edgehill, Summerby, here's King Clancy, Morley, the five pit Simons, it's going to be trying a one-two with the referee but it's broken for Berry and free kick for the foul on John Rose. By, on John Rose by Beacons. Yeah, I think Berry can hold the heads up. Held, uh, hold them up high. You think the money City have spent? And this fella, well, he's worked miracles. Well, Horlock has conceded the corner and uh, he's already got horrible memories of one incident tonight. With a goal from David Johnson. This could well be Berry's last opportunity to rescue three points. There's a sting in the tail yet. Jepson's in there. So too is Butler. All the big danger men. And that's a disappointingly wasteful corner from Berry's viewpoint. It's such a late stage in the game. It may not be over yet. Yes, it is. So Stan Turner's Berry continue their formidable home record. 29 league games here unbeaten. Shake of the hand there with Frank Clark, relieved to emerge from this game with a point after Berry had taken the lead through David Johnson in the second half.
But the hero of the night, David Morley, on his senior debut, only picked because Ian Brightwell was ill, and he turned up with nine minutes to go to head in the equaliser from a corner. Dean Kiley disappointed to be beaten by that, having earlier saved a penalty from King Kladzi and saved two from Beacons in open play. Really, it looked as though that uh, penalty save would be the turning point of the game in Berry's favour. Turned out not to be, though. King Kladzi was the man who won it after Lachetti and Gray had converged in on him. But King Kladzi unusually saw his spot kick saved by Dean Kiley. Kiley, though, beaten by that late equaliser after Berry had given themselves such real hope there. Johnson capitalising on Horlock's mistake and finishing brilliantly. And the home team will be disappointed to have been undone by a set piece. Morley knocking in the corner for the equaliser. Berry won. Manchester City won the final score here at Gig Lane. A classic derby encounter, the honours even thanks to our commentators Rob Hawthorne and...